this is either going to be great or horrible. Today I'm seeing Miller's Girl and I'm very excited, I think. I don't know what to expect. It's going to be controversial, I think, no matter what. And I'm here because I love Jenna Ortega, like everyone else. I also love Martin Freeman, her co-star equal in this. And it is such an odd duo. This is an indie film and I'm nervous. I'm nervous about this one. I will watch anything Jenna Ortega's in now because of Wednesday. I loved her in that. The writing was horrible, but the rest of it was great. And then I looked at her other discography and I really loved the fallout. And now I love her acting. She's amazing. And I will watch anything she's in, even if it's bad. <laughs> So when I heard about the synopsis, the, the, the premise of this story, I got concerned and I read the screenplay. I found the screenplay and I wanted to know what I'd be getting into. So I took a deep dive. Now it's written, the screenplay, written by Jade Halley Barlett. And this is her debut movie. I love that. Love female writers, directors making their mark but I had some problems. Okay, let me start over. Let's tell you what this is about. The short synopsis on IMDb, a creative writing assignment yields complex results between a teacher and his talented student. Yeah, I guess that's it. That is it. It's a really narrow concept, not original concept. And that is where I'm like, why? Why? So Jenna Ortega plays Cario Sweet. One, I will be comparing this to the screenplay just because I've never actually read one before I saw a movie, so I'm interested to see what changes they made. And in the screenplay, she is 17. And now in the movie, she's 18. And I think they did that because this is gonna be a scandalous movie and they don't wanna get in any trouble. So they were like, at least she's 18. It's consensual age, so there's nothing there. But obviously teacher-student dynamic should not exist, should not happen. So it's a bit more high stakes, I guess, in the screenplay with her being 17. And I will say, in what world do 17 year olds sound like this? <laughs> okay, let me dive into Jade. So Jade, love this for her, that she's having a movie, but was primarily a playwright. She wrote plays. And I read the script, I read a review on the script that I highly agreed with, and here are my issues with it. One, it's written like, like I be needing a dictionary. I looked up several words in it and I don't have the biggest vocabulary, but I shouldn't have to look up so many words within this thing. Like if this is gonna play in a movie and they say that, I'm not gonna be able to look it up. I'm gonna be like, okay, context clues, but like, why did they use that word? An example of the word, vituperation. Vituperation. <laughs> Which means bitter and abusive language. Um. <laughs> This critic says, I have never in the 7,000 scripts I've read come across that word before. Yeah, it's because you don't need it. Who knows that? No one's gonna get that. So Jade being a playwright makes sense because the script felt very narrow. There's like only a few settings. There's only a few characters and it's a lot of dialogue. And from the few classes I took on screenwriting, you don't want a bunch of talking heads. You don't want just dialogue in a room where nothing's happening. And there was a lot of that. Now the dialogue is where she plays with things. She, it's all very poetic. She's very smart. Like that is, evident and I don't think it needs to be but this is like a dark academia type of what if there was something happening but it's supposed to be a spin off that and I'm not sure if that's gonna come across or do what she was hoping and I'm worried that this movie is going to fall into the tropes that we know and have seen of teacher and student and taking advantage of power and like well who really has the power it doesn't matter it shouldn't happen and we've seen this before and I don't know Oh, we will see. There are very mixed reviews about this, which confuses me a lot. So here's what I've learned about Jade's take on it. Because after reading the script, I was like, ew, icky, I don't like picturing any of this, let alone with actors I like, such as Martin Freeman and Jenna Ortega. I don't want that. There's a big age gap. I think there's a smaller age gap in the script. And like, I guess that's better, but like, not really. She's also 17 in the script, so not better. <sighs> But the whole point of it, I guess this will probably have spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers. Oh, I don't know. I'll probably have spoilers. Cause it's gonna be like, 
touchy subject. I'm gonna need to tell these details to make my point. But here's what Jade has said about it. She said twice in two interviews, she said, I want they, the audience, I want the audience to have grace, to have grace for characters that are not the perfect villain or the perfect victim. First of all, when she first said that, I was like, what? Perfect victim? What? We don't need a perfect victim. That's a thing. That's a weird thing to think about. She's trying to turn this on its head. This trope, she's trying to break the binary of it. Okay, I also know this will end with a, and what happens? What happens? Up for the viewer to decide. Now, there are some cases where I like that. An example, Inception, when the top is still spinning and you're like is it gonna topple is it not i think it topples for one but that's fun that's like oh wow i love inception this i'm not gonna like it i'm gonna want to know who gets in trouble who doesn't get in trouble what happens i'm gonna want to know that because this is such like a known trope i'm not gonna go away from this i don't think critically thinking about that power dynamic and she wants people to leave examining their preconceived judgments of these characters. I'm going to assume he is a bad guy. And like, I can objectively say good people do bad things. And like, I can surely see his point of view in this. I don't need to see his, his point of view. I don't need to see that. I understand it already. Ugh. And Jenna Ortega, Cario Sweet, is gonna like switch this power dynamic to play in her advantage. And I are, I know I'm gonna have a problem with the point of the movie being like women can lie and take advantage of men for their own benefit. Like it's just gonna be hard. I don't want, I don't want this but I'm gonna see it and I'm excited about seeing it. And maybe I'll come away, maybe they'll have changed a lot of things about the script and I'll end up liking a lot more. That is what I'm hoping for because the, reading the script, it did not leave a good feeling with me. Mm -mm. So the reviews, when I saw this first on IMDb, I could not look at the, could not click on the reviews like you normally can, which is annoying because I don't think a lot of people had seen it, but it had a 7.6 out of 10. And I was like, damn, 7.6 out of 10 for this script? They must have, wow, I'm surprised. And now since the it had its premiere and people have seen it, it's at a 5.6, which is more the lines that I would expect for this type of movie. And the reviews have been very conflicting. A headline, Miller's Girl is a remarkable debut for Jade Halley Burlett. A remarkable debut. Okay, cool. Miller's Girl with Jenna Ortega is an airless cold affair that fails to spark. Okay. Miller's Girl review, a small town teen, small town teen, <laughs> learns that adult ambition comes at a steep price. That implies that she's gonna have some consequences. Jenna Ortega is razor sharp in riveting erotic thriller. I don't want that. <laughs> also, it's listing it as a comedy drama. It did not have me laughing. Is this a comedy? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to be a comedy. Maybe like a it's not even a satire also. Okay, so this is an indie film. It was written by Barlett, I think back in 2016, predating Me Too movement. And one review was like, this is not a 2024 film. This was supposed to be back in 2016. And I think that's gonna be evident. Maybe it's trying to go the route where it's so unrealistic that we can have some suspension of disbelief and like really immerse ourselves into this concept because the way that they speak is so unrealistic for a 17, 18 year old. Okay, I wanted to read some of this script review, but here's what I mean about reality. Most of the conversations here, particularly the ones in the first half of the script, reek of a writer showing off her skills rather than one who's trying to write the best story. There are lots of lines like this one can you keep a secret i'm keeping victoria's in my pants does that count 
And while on their own, these lines are harmless, when they're strung together with 50 other variations of the same exchange, they stop feeling like real people and start feeling like, check out my dialogue skill, bitches. <laughs> and I'm worried about that. I think when it is put on screen, maybe that was vetted and probably better. But I don't know, judging by the trailer, it kind of feels like it's gonna be cringy on top of it all. Since it is an indie film, I was like, why are these two people in this movie? And it's because Barlett contacted Martin Freeman asking if he would be in it, like specifically, and was all for it. So I'm not gonna hate on Barlett. It seemed like there were so many people who were in support of this and that she had a real vision and was trying to do something and I will always support that. And like, it's good to step on the tightrope or whatever but this could easily topple. So Martin Freeman was all for it and signed on and then they got Jenna Ortega. Okay, great. That's why I'm going. So good, good job on their part. But another interesting thing is that another top producer is Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen, what are you doing here? And I don't think it's gonna be a comedy even though it's listed as a comedy thriller drama. It's just Seth Rogen was not who I expected to show up when researching this. <laughs> But one thing I'm excited about is Gideon Adlon, who plays Jenna Ortega, Cario Sweet's friend, Winnie. Cute name in the script. Did not really care for her because she was doing the same damn thing with a different teacher. And I'm like, oh, two girls going after teachers? For what? Why? and the teachers were crude about them and it just didn't feel like, like maybe that would happen, but like not so obviously. Also, where are the other students? Where is this? Didn't feel real, but I love Gideon Adlon. If you haven't seen Blockers, I recommend. It looks bad, but it's good. And a few of the reviews have said that she's done really well in it. And I'm excited for that. I'm excited for good acting, not excited about anything else, but I'm excited to make this video and I will tell you what I think when I'm done with it tonight. I'm excited. I'm excited for something potentially bad. I love that. All right. I don't know why I did that. I feel like I need a little bit more time to like formulate a thought. I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> but I'll be fine when we own it on DVD. We don't need to own that. <laughs> it's like the moral was girls be slutty. <laughs> For you. I know. Where were the people? There were no people. <laughs> there were no like, people. This was like six people long. Yeah. They all talked in a way that made me so bored and like I kept zoning out and then having to zone back in at the end and they were still saying nothing and it was like without great. subtitles I miss having that movie the really His like accent is it kept being like I love Gideon I love like her. English and then American and then Tennessee <laughs> I know yeah, it did also <laughs> they kept being like oh we're in bumble nowhere you guys are in like a mansion yeah. A beautiful wonderland. Yeah, like what big, kind of public school, school looks like that? And her house and the woods by it. What's your rating out of 10? After I think it might be higher, but currently it's like a four. Okay. Or less. <laughs> oh. Five. I I would give it maybe just like a five at this at this moment. Like a four. I kind of feel was, like maybe a three. It was kind of. I think it's undeniably no. like made well. No. Why was it made? The more I, I think, I the more I think about it, the worse it gets. Like, okay. Like, we'll I mean, we'll get we'll get. Shocking moment number one was when Gideon, the gay friend we liked, came in to. Uh, What's her name? Sugar syrup. What? God, her name is Cairo Sweet. Like yeah. sugar sweet. <laughs> oh God. Came into her room 
and was crying and I thought she was gonna be like, why would you do that to me? And she said, what are you doing to Mr. Miller? <laughs> it was like, who cares? <laughs> you like came in an emo hoodie for what? I thought it was cause you were sad about your girl crush. Not was your English teacher. That was mean. Oh, that was so mean. So mean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is the next day. I definitely needed some time to formulate some real thoughts about this movie because after it, I felt like I had brain rot, honestly. There was just so many words, so many people being trying to be smart, not saying exactly what they mean and thinking of the most elaborate way to say something. It was all about subtext and like, it wasn't made for the theaters. I don't think. <laughs> it was just a lot to digest and it was shocking and not because it was like it was scandalous, but it wasn't explicit. Like in comparison to other movies, it was not explicit pretty much at all. There was no actual sex scenes in it, but it felt so much worse than a whole lot of sex scenes in a lot of different movies because it was scandalous or whatever. And like, I just didn't need it. But it's, I'm not gonna just it on the movie. There are, there are definitely parts of it that I liked and I do understand why it's gonna have a polar reaction between ugh or good job. Um, some people will probably love this movie. Not I, not I, but I'm glad I saw it. So here's something that I liked. <laughs> When you cast Martin Freeman and Jenna Ortega, they're gonna make the most of a script. And I think they did a great job because they're great actors. And it was, okay, it's filmed really weirdly. It is filmed like a play. And I think it's not gonna hit because this should have been a play. I would like it better as a play. And a nitpicky thing is that I didn't like the editing, the continuity editing. Like there weren't things that were wrong. Just like when a character would move and it would cut shots, they weren't in exactly the same position as they were in before. And that's where I was like, oh, this is an indie film from a first time director of a movie. And it felt like that. It was also like a play because every scene was like, like the script, it did stay pretty damn close to the script and the characters, there were so few characters. The end credit scene was actually comical. Not that you need a ton, just like it was weird. It felt like a movie that actors will love to do and an audience won't love to watch. I'm sure they got the script and was like, wow, that's such a complex person. That's such a touching the line, but not crossing the line. Where's the line? You get a play kind of bad and kind of good the whole time. And I'm sure they were like, wow, that seems like a great challenge. I want to do that. I think that's what sold them on the part. And I think it's great for actors, but I didn't personally get anything out of this. Watching Jenna and Martin have a conversation you can feel how natural it is the scene lingers and you get all of their natural movements he touched his beard a lot and they're just really good they're just really good actors so like that part of it some parts of this movie were mesmerizing <sighs> Everything, like the atmosphere, the sounds, the fogginess, it was a very pretty movie, which I loved. I liked the soundtrack, but I realized what part of it was a comedy, which was me, my wife, my twin, mouth agape, laughing at how serious they were taking it. <laughs> It was, it was a hoot. I recommend going because you're like, oh, what the fuck am I watching? It's funny. We were like, <laughs> are you seeing this the whole time? We were genuinely laughing in the theater, like silently, but like there was just two other people in the theater with us. I really wish it just had been us. 
Okay, no, for real, the comedy aspect of it was Gideon Adlon, who I thought was gonna be the standout, and she was definitely the standout. She was the best part of this movie, hands down. She played Winnie, and Winnie is such a weird character that you're kind of gonna like her no matter what, because like she's wearing a giant dolphin shirt with a trench coat and a mini skirt and she had a lot of charisma she was she was the one joking about it in the way that you would expect people to joke about it and Jenna Ortega Cario Sweet what the f is that name my god the Wattpad of it all was the one that was taking it in a way that you're like this doesn't feel realistic at all now because there were moments where she genuinely felt like a high schooler a little bit when it was just her and Gideon hanging out and talking about things. I mean, it was still like super pretentious and weird and she was smoking all the time indoors in her giant mansion. We'll get to that. But there were times where it was like, oh, you are 21 year old playing a high schooler. It feels like that. And then the rest of the time when she's like kind of seducing the teacher for what? I don't know. It didn't feel real like who no it was it was just too a combination of too many things but let's get to the mansion they lived in pennsylvania not to some some i don't know where they called it bum nowhere and i'm like are you kidding me this place is beautiful this place is beautiful and there's no other people in the movie so i'm like yeah i guess it feels like you live in a deserted island with n no population but it's beautiful. She lives in a freaking mansion and her parents are forever elsewhere in a different country. So she's just a 17 year old, 18 year old, sorry, living in a mansion by herself. Great combo. Great setup. Then she's so ungrateful about the situation. I'm like, girl, you've got like everyone's dream here. You could just be a writer in your pretty f***ing mansion with all your bugs. But instead, you're doing this sh and I hate that the motivation for this plot, the movie, is her assignment. She wants to get into Yale. If you have 4.6 GPA, you're probably gonna, and you sound like that, you're probably gonna get into Yale. But she needs to write about what her greatest achievement is. This is so stupid. If this part would have been left out of it, I felt like it would have been pulled off better because Winnie kind of gives her the idea and then she takes it like way too far. But she's like, okay. My greatest achievement is going to be this weird possible statutory rape thing with a teacher. What? What achievement is that? I don't get it. And like, if you're that good of a writer, write it. Write it and have it not be real. What, Yale is going to look into the case or something? Just f***ing write something. You can think of something if you're spitting out these sentences on a daily. So that part of it, like the plot, the plot wasn't there and the rest of it isn't going to follow, especially when it's f***ing weird. And the parts that were genuinely like roll eyes, laugh out loud, what am I watching, is how they filmed her. They filmed her like she was an absolute goddess in these like weird fantasy did it happen did it not thing and I was just like are we watching what are we watching here someone's someone's fantasy it wasn't my fantasy and they kissed <clears throat> I told you there were spoilers they kissed and I wasn't expecting that to actually happen and it was so long <laughs> it was so drawn out there's a reason we don't like these types of relationships and I don't think the movie said anything new about it. I feel like it, if this was, it happened in 2016, I don't know, people would probably like be even more appalled a little bit, but like it would have felt interesting part to add to the conversation, but this trope has been too played out that it's not gonna be what she wanted it to be. And that does make me sad because I know Barlett is talented. And I'm excited to see what else she does, especially if she can write something and get this much support for it and get it produced. Like, go her. That's great. I'm happy that she was able to make this. And for her, I hope it does well. It's not problematic enough that I'm gonna like be like, oh, don't watch that. We can't support that. Not at all. It just is what it is. And I and it didn't need to be. <laughs> But it's not like, oh, I can't believe someone would make that. 
it's still from a woman's perspective and it's trying to do a thing. It just didn't really feel like the right situation where a woman would have power. Then it comes down to, did anything really happen? That does matter. It does matter if it really happened or not. And I don't want women to lie about it if it didn't. And I want him to get in trouble if it did. So it's just kind of more black and white than the introspective thinking she was hoping would come from this movie. I actually got a movie ticket that hasn't happened in a while, which I was happy about. I worked at a theater my first job and we always had tickets. I ripped your ticket and gave, gave it to you. Um, but now since I have like the apps, that never happens. I don't know. It's nice. What else did I write? Pretentious it was. It was pretentious and I don't really vibe with that usually. Okay, in the beginning of this I was weird about perfect villain and perfect victim and I'll give it to her. I still don't totally know what I think about it. I think it's just- I think I- I think it's just that I already had grace for people being both good and bad. I already know that. So like I under, I think she did do a good job at illustrating a situation where you can see both sides, but I don't think we need that. I just don't think we need that. I don't want it in this scenario. Do it in a different setting. It doesn't need to be a high schooler and a teacher. And I'm obviously going to side with the high school girl. And then I don't want it to be a situation where, where it was actually her fault and people would turn this narrative around to be like, see women be lying and manipulating and that and we're hating on women. I don't want, I don't want an opportunity where that could happen. And this would maybe lend itself there depending on who you are. But this movie made me want to smoke and drink because they were doing it all the time. The, let me pull up her name. I want to, okay, the, the wife was a great actress. I didn't know who she was. Dagmara, wow. I can't read, so Domingsk. <laughs> Domingsk? Domingsk. Dragmar Domingsk. Great job. She was a drunk, mean writer the whole time, but a really good one at that. But like each scene, it was a play. They went there, they went there, they talked at each place. And what was the plot? I don't know. They had plans. They didn't go on the plans. Bashir Salahuddin, who played the other teacher, Wilson? I don't I don't remember and it didn't say. I liked a lot too. I, I liked that character a lot more in the movie than in the script because he was, he just made him more lively. And they did a good job at him also being horrible, but knowing where the line is and not crossing it. And like, I hate that. That's freaking annoying. But I guess it's better than what Mr. Miller did. I can't believe Mr. Miller and Henry Miller, the author, same name. Why? I mean, I know why. It's extremely obvious why, but then why? Like, get a little bit more creative. But I felt the most sad for Gideon, for Winnie, because she was, she established very on, had a big crush on Cario. It was very known that she liked her, is a lesbian, or like, at least by, I genuinely have no idea why she was attempting to have a relationship with the teacher just for funsies. Like these girls are both 4.6, 4.4 grade point average girlies. Why are you doing this? It appears to be no other people at the goddamn school. So like maybe they had no other option, but I felt the most bad for her because Cario used her just like she was using everyone else and was like, hey, let's make out and then basically like bit her lip and threw her to the ground. Like, okay, I got what I needed you for. You send a dirty picture of us to your teacher. What? She was like crying the whole rest of the movie. That was sad. And like, I'm mad that the takeaway of this movie is going to be edits on TikTok of like that scene and, and the fantasy stuff with Martin. Like that's, that's what's gonna happen. And I don't like it. You're not gonna get a bunch of people critically thinking about this situation. You're gonna get that. <laughs> so yes, Winnie, I felt bad for you and I'm sorry. Did I feel bad for Mr. Miller? No, don't flirt with your students. Don't do it. Even if they're flirting with you, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. You need to not. Okay, I was reading some reviews after. Oh yeah, I'll just give a shout out to the bugs in this movie. Love you. They were great. They were cool. Green spider, beetle, 
the freaking shot where they show the beetle on her leg after she's like on a landline telephone outside wearing this dress by herself simply to make a call. Ridiculous and laughable, but the beetle itself, great. Someone wrote, bugs crawl on windowsills and a lighted cigarette drifts lazily to the floor in a movie that traps gifted actors in a fog of pheromones and cliche. True. The New York Times <laughs> wrote a small article. I don't know, like they cover her so much, but like I was not expecting the New York Times. The end of it was, this is inappropriate. Quote, a chastened Jonathan chastened i can't f***ing read chastened let me look it up chastened 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 this is inappropriate a chastened jonathan finally admonishes admonishes this is why this movie is not for me i can't even read a review about it admonish yeah admonish warn or reprimed oh, so i can't f***ing read warn or reprimand someone firmly okay this is inappropriate a chastened jonathan finally admonishes Cario, having climaxed while reading her term paper. She may be a minx, but he's the real monster. <laughs> yeah, if you- I can't believe the audacity for him to do that and then come to her and be like, this is inappropriate, you can't give me this, bro. Okay, but then I'm like, but then I'm like, so did Cario genuinely have feelings for this man? If so, I guess they had chemistry, but like it felt like she was purely doing it because Winnie suggested it and she had this idea. So that's why she started that. And she did come in having read his book and all the books and wanted to impress him came in an hour early. She did do that before having the idea to make her biggest achievement be this weird sex scandal thing. But then she only does that once he rejects her and it's fair for her to be so upset by him leading her on because she's a child and then thinking she misunderstood the thing and he doesn't have the guts to really own up to his feelings. It's fair for her to be upset by that. But it's at that point where she's like, okay, I'll screw him over and hand my paper into the principal. Now were you, what, were you planning to do that the whole time? Were you, or, or what? What if it had gone well and he was like, loved the paper, girly? let's do something like what if that would have happened what was she gonna write about i seduced my teacher it went great or was she always just gonna screw him over but they made it feel like oh, i got you you underestimated me i can turn this all around and get you in trouble even if we didn't do anything it felt like that so like just the plot was not plotting it was not good it was not good not a good concept to dive into and overdone out of place but yet it exists and it and i think it was made with a lot of passionate people and i love that love seeing passionate people and a lot of parts of it was like i can forget about what's happening and just look at the pretty fog and the pretty scenery oh my god jenna ortega coming out of the woods with coffees that she what got on her walk to school and then carried through the woods to come out exactly where they smoke. What is that? But it was pretty. It was awkward. They like, the, the shots lingered and it didn't feel like super intentional. It felt like you linger because this is written for a play. They have more dialogue and you have to see their expressions. And then you're like, weird cinematography. <laughs> okay. This is long enough. If you aren't gonna see it because it's not in a ton of theaters and you don't wanna, and I don't, I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna be on something anyway. It felt like it should have been a movie that is streaming and not in the theater. So eventually you'll probably see it if you're watching this or you have watched it and thank you for listening to my thoughts about it. But here, here, I will wrap it up. We rated it like a four or five out of 10 in the car. And I think I would stick with that. I would give it a, honestly four or not four, five or six, 5.5 5 out of 10 because I can't knock it for the things it excelled at. And it was a well-made movie. It was a well-made indie movie with some great acting, some also cringy but it was better than a heap load of movies. But I didn't like it and it didn't do what it was supposed to. I didn't talk about the ending. It's because 
there wasn't one. <laughs> she shows up at the court thing and is a single tear. There was a lot of single tears. And then like drops it and smiles like, haha, I got you. And he's sitting there like, oh, what did I do? What did I do? That was it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna draw any conclusions. A lot of people grade it. It's suiting to grade it, giving the content. So I will grade this a C. It passed, but barely. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed making this. I like talking about bad movies. Do all the things if you liked it, you know. Thank you.